How is everybody doing today? Oh, come on now. Now, I know I'm the last thing that stands between you and going home and probably a start to an early weekend, right? But you've been here all week learning, growing, learning more about your industry, some trends, some tools, some better ways to lead through uncertainty, right? So I want to hear it loud and proud for the high-performing leaders in this room. How is everybody doing today? <laughs> outstanding, outstanding. Well, much better. Well, as you heard from that outstanding introduction, and by the way, thank you, Anthony, for that great introduction and for having me here today. My name is Brandon Williams, but we have to be able to lead them. We have to be able to execute. Environments just like 2005. When I was young, fighter pilot in my mid-20s, over the skies of Iraq. Responsible for this airplane, responsible for my wingman who was in another airplane in my formation. And at that time, our mission was to oversee and support the Iraqis' first democratic elections. So as we're flying over the skies of Iraq, patrolling our certain area, our radio comes alive from our command and control center saying, hey, there's a troops in contact situation at these coordinates. And we're the closest air asset there is. And so what do we do? We immediately punch in our coordinates into our aircraft's GPS navigation system. We get there, and when we get on station, it's chaos. There's friendlies on the ground, our forces that are taking fire. The radio's going everywhere. We can't tell who's who. There's the enemy. We're trying to find them. We're trying to fly these airplanes. That, like I said, the 250 switches, dials, and displays going to 340 miles per hour, trying to keep track of all the other friendly air assets that are around us so we don't run into them. Oh, by the way, as if that wasn't enough, now there's weather coming in, which means the clouds are getting lower, which means we have to fly airplanes lower and lower to the ground, which makes flying a little tougher because what's the number one goal of any pilot, any kind of airplane? Don't hit the ground. See, smart crowd, right? Or anything attached to it. So now we're putting more focus into that. Oh, by the way, since we're smaller fighter type aircraft, we don't carry as much fuel as those airliners you fly on. And we weren't expected to be in this situation today. So now we're starting to get low on gas. So how do we get to the air to air fueling taker and still provide support to these friendly forces? But that environment I just described potentially sounds like sometimes in your world, doesn't it? Sometimes your industries, the challenges you face, the changes we see now post COVID, but we had to learn this the hard way in aviation. In the early days of aviation, up to about the 50s and 60s, we just accepted that flying was an inherently risky business. An airplane would crash. We'd say, that is tragic. We'd go and investigate it. They said, well, the pilot made a mistake. Bad pilot, don't do that again. Hey, pilots, don't do this. See the problem with that, though? That's a blame and train culture. That's a culture that doesn't look at the system. Because if you try to change the people or the person without changing the system, what are you going to get? The same exact results. Now, you may have heard about situation awareness in the self-defense industry, law enforcement, or some other areas. But it's just that. It's the awareness of your surroundings. It's the awareness of all those different variables affecting your current state at that current time. But more importantly, how it's going to affect your state in the future. And this is so important because a lot of times I talk about with decision making, my leadership coaching, I always say perception, decision, execution, perception, decision, execution. Because oftentimes we just look at decision or even execution. We don't think about perception. What was the perception we started with? What was our situation awareness before we made that decision? And that's why this is so critical, not only for you, but for your CEOs, your leadership teams, your credit unions and all the people involved. But seriously, there's no other hard questions in the uh, presentation, okay? <laughs> no, but there's four. Now, why do I ask you that? Why do I show you this? Because you think we ever take off and go out what I call a single ship by ourselves with one airplane training our combat? Absolutely not. We always go out with a wingman. Sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes four. Because a key part of decentralized execution, when you give that autonomy, you help your people with their situation awareness. You give them good commander's intent, but a key part of that is mutual support. Mutual support. The idea that not only are we concerned about our people, but we anticipate the support they're going to need. And we put the betterment of the team of the organization above our own self-interest. But none of this matters 
Everything I've talked about at this point, you can forget all that if you don't have what I call a just culture. And what is a just culture? You just heard the last speaker said something about psychological safety. And I always say, I love that term, but I always say just culture is something we've been doing in the military, our fighter pilots, and aviation, especially the aviation safety world, way before psychological safety was even a word. And it's the idea that everyone comes to the table. Everyone has a voice. Anyone can speak up in an environment of open and honest communication. But the reason we embrace that so much, I mean, think about the military. We walk around with rank on our shoulders and our hats, right? But in a world such as flying fighters, which is extremely dangerous, a high reliability organization, we know that if we don't have this just culture when anybody can speak up, non-retributional type environment, we're never going to get better and we're gonna lose lives. So we are forced to do that. 